Hello my friends, welcome back to Wild Wild's videos. The world of magnetic motors is vast and the possibilities are many. I have been working on perpetual motion motors for some time now and after making some promising replicas I have found a method to make magnetic fields visible to check where there might be design errors. More about this in the course of the video. Also today we look at a very nice example of a free energy engine. The ingenious thing about this motor is that due to its design it repositions its own magnets on its own and very cleverly uses the laws of levers. Because the rotating magnetic slide is always on the longer lever. Let's examine how the principle is conceived and how it can work. The basis of this motor is a magnetic repulsion. Magnetic repulsion is familiar to anyone who has tried to bring magnets with the same poles together. The poles repel each other. The magnets try to avoid each other mostly sideways and they try to reach the place of least magnetic repulsion. The situation is exactly the same here. The rotating carriage which is located on the outside of the motor is always in the area of magnetic repulsion. Its movement goes sideways to reach the area of least repulsion. This movement turns the long arm, the longer lever on which it is located and thus transforms the area that previous had only a low repulsion into an area of stronger and then maximum repulsion. The lever forces the magnets of the inner wings which are always on the smaller levers to move towards the rotating slide. So the rotating slide again and again experiences a great magnetic repulsion and keeps moving and moving. This can go forever and because this also overcomes friction we have a perpetual motion machine plus. More energy is generated than is expended. Free energy. Fantastic. A very well thought out principle. Let's enjoy a few views of this super invention together before I make the invisible visible from about minute 5 in the video and we then see in more detail what is happening here. Great, you have made it here. The trick 
I'm going to use now is to translate the magnetic field into a gravitational field that has exactly the same effect for our example, but with which everyone is immediately familiar. We are all familiar with gravity. Look at how a steel ball moves on a glass pane when it gets into a magnetic field. We are not surprised that the ball behaves similarly to a planet in the gravitational field of a sun. So to illustrate this, I designed this model. The magnetic attraction becomes a deepening in the model with a ball in it as the magnetic force. The ball that falls into the deepening is therefore the effect. The depth of the deepening corresponds to the strength of the field. The forces are balanced if the deepening remains unchanged and the ball comes to a standstill there. A balance is created. If a force is exerted at right angles to the direction of action of the magnetic field, then the ball is pushed out of the deepening and up the slope. The force exerted to move equal, mutually repulsive poles of magnets towards each other is symmetrical shown to the attraction as a hill. The ball on the top of the hill always tries to roll down the slope to the lowest repulsion. The poles try to avoid each other. After the magnets have moved out of the way, a balance is also created. If we now apply this principle to the magnetic motor, it might look something like this. The ball rolls steadily down the side of the hill and thus increases in speed. The next hill is offset downwards because the magnets inside the motor are still far away from the circulating magnet carriage. The movement of the magnetic carriage pushes them up and the strength of the repulsion increases. But at this point the ball already has enough power to roll up the remaining part of the hill and overcome it. The ball now rolls forever down the slope with small interruptions. Well, it could be like that. But of course it can't be like that. What is neglected here is that the laws of leverage only ever work in equilibrium. If the distance of the large lever on the outside moves a small lever, the kinetic energy is only converted and not gained. The force that the inner magnets need to approach the rotating slide is just as great as if they had already been in the greatest approximation from the beginning. And the friction shown here as a shining light does the rest. So in reality we tend to have this result. What do we learn from this? This system looks like it could create a permanent imbalance. But in our world there is no permanent imbalance. There is no infinitely high mountain and you cannot go infinitely downhill. Infinity is probably not part of our universe and so everything tends towards equilibrium. I hope I have been able to shed some light on the magical world of perpetual motion magnet motors. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you dare. Thanks for watching. Have fun.